I've been in the television production and creation business for the last 15 years in Asia. Most of the shows that I've produced have been around music about celebrating and promoting Chinese artists. I guess the motivation is because that very, very early on, I realized I didn't really have the talent to be an artist myself. So it was best that I get into the business of helping them to enable their dreams. In 2003, I was given an opportunity to create and write a show that would eventually become one of the highest rated primetime Friday evening programs in China called Wo Xing Wo Show, or in Chinese or in English called My Show. Season one, we had 5,000 people come and uh, audition. In season two, we had 50,000 people come in and audition. And by season three, we had 150,000 people lined up across the country to audition. And it's with that today, I like to title my speech to be called Dreams of Chinese Young Artists. By season two, I guess I had become an accidental celebrity as part of the show. Boxes and boxes of fan mail came in, flowers, paintings, t-shirts, pillows, etc., etc., poured into my office. And this was something I had actually hadn't completely expected. But through the letters that they wrote and all the questions that they were asking us about, I got a glimpse about Chinese young people and their dreams that was completely revolutionary or revelationary or a revelation to me. So I like to share with you three stories about a boy from Chengdu, a girl from Shenyang, and then another boy from Kangdian. Zhang Jie came to the show in 2004, and his song was the Backstreet Boys song called No Matter What. He sang it in perfect English and perfect diction. Afterwards, I went up to him and I said, so where did you learn to speak like that or sing like that? He looked at me with a blank face, and I realized that he didn't speak a word of English. Later on, I realized that he had played the song over and over and over again in order to get his pitch perfect right and perfect English. His mother came to me with a bag of noodles, with a well-worn white apron, very, very brown from, I guess, years of working. And I learned later that it was her mother who made a living by selling noodles on a roadside that supported his dreams of being a singer. When Zhang Jie first started to want to sing, he went to a local bar, and the boss there said to him, you can come and sing for four hours, and I'll give you wu kuai, five renminbi. He looked at the wu kuai, and he couldn't believe that's how much money he could make from singing. With many, many wu kuai, he bought a computer, downloaded more music, and taught himself more English songs. A couple of months ago, eight years later in Beijing, I went to a concert at the People's Hall of People, and he sang before 10,000 fans that were screaming, and you, shouldn't have seen, you should have seen the smile on his mother's face. She was so proud. The second person I'd like to talk about is Wei Jiaqing. She's 21 years old from Shenyang, very, very attractive, low alto voice, came to the show and immediately captivated everybody and then started to make it to the final 10 when she got a phone call from her boyfriend who said, if you want to stay with the show, I will break up with you. I don't want you to be in show business. Jia Qing had a legitimate shot at winning, and she was conflicted. We left the decision to her, but in the end, she volunteered to leave the show and withdraw from the competition. A couple of years later, I saw her in Beijing, and I said, what happened? How are you doing? She said, well, I broke with my boyfriend a year later, and I swear I'll never listen to a man's advice again. <laughs> I said, go, girlfriend. The last story I'd like to share with you is about a gentleman who rode a horse for six hours to audition in Chengdu. He sang a song that he used to sing to his sheep. And Kang Dian, as you know, is famous for love music. After singing this, we gave him an immediate pass to Shanghai, and he said, no, thank you, but I have to go back and tend to my flock. It turns out that he has never heard his voice recorded in digital form. And as a result of his story and his passion for music, we decided to make a small donation to Kang Dian, where there is now a small digital recording studio. A couple of months later, I started to get lots and lots of thank you letters from around the country, apparently from Gansu, Qinghai, and Tibet. And there, 
the people started to thank me about all these things that I was supposedly donating, school supplies, soccer balls, sneakers, clothing, and so forth. I actually didn't do any of this, and I was quite embarrassed, and I started to deny doing all of this. But as you know, in Chinese culture, the more you deny it, the more they really believe you're just being modest. So they kept saying, yeah, right, sure, but you know, thank you anyway. But apparently what I realized was that the fans had taken my name and started to make donations on behalf of my nickname. And it was a movement that I guess they had embraced all their own, and that really taught me a great deal about what celebrity and fame is about. And so through this story of three people, one who made it against all odds, a girl who had to change her traditional values and rules in the face of competition, and lastly, somebody who resisted the fast urbanization of China decided to go back to his own ways. I have three very, very quick and simple reflections. The first is that I guess we really should be good stewards of what we've been given. Do really the most of what you have, more or less. The second thing is Andy Warhol once said that everybody's going to have 15 minutes of fame. I'm clearly on my 14th minute. And I've learned that really with fame, so much of it is about it could be warmth and provide comfort, or it could destroy everything around you. Luckily, in this case, the young people around the show has taught me a lot about what it can do for the greater good. Last but not least, my final thought is that I think there is a creative renaissance going on in China today. Young people are creating things online, musically, fashion, artwork, and so forth at a pace and in a sense that I would define as modernity inspired by tradition. They're redefining for themselves what modern China is. And I hope that as I continue to do television, that I would be able to bring and share more of these stories with all of you, because it's really happening every day all around us. Thank you very much.